Hi everyone and welcome to the MasterCard Virtual Press Lounge here at the EPA's Pay360. My name is Mark Walker and I'm the Editorial Director for the Fintech Times, a global multimedia news outlet created around the world's first leading fintech newspaper. It's great to have today with us uh, Mark uh, McMitry. Uh, welcome Mark, uh, how are you today? Very good indeed, thank you. Nice to be with you. Thank you very much. So maybe we could just sort of start off maybe giving us a bit of an overview of, of yourself uh, and your background. Uh, with, with pleasure of doing so. Uh, so I'm an award-winning independent payments consultant specializing in any kind of payment transactions or in fintech solutions. Uh, I provide advisory services to clients all around market assessments, strategic planning, competitive analysis, and also supplier selection. Uh, I've been working in the payments industry for 25 years now. And during that time, I've traveled to over 60 countries advising people on payments technologies and how to launch appropriate solutions. And uniquely in the consulting space, I work right across the payments ecosystems. So one day I'll be working with a merchant, another day with a card scheme, another day with a bank, another day with a fintech provider. And really it's this breadth of payments experience and working with the different stakeholders that really gives me invaluable insight into what's happening in the industry at the moment. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. It's really great to have you with us because my, my first question is obviously going to be um, focused very much around sort of the global payments industry. You know, the, the COVID pandemic has obviously had a, a quite a significant effect on the payments industry. What, what sort of areas do you think it's most impacted from your experience? You're right that COVID has had a, a big impact, but even without you know, COVID, there's more happening in the payments industry now than at any time in the last 25 years. Change has been coming from every single dimension, from regulatory aspects, from technology aspects, new players, M&A activity. So even without COVID, there was a huge amount of change and increased complexity you know, facing our industry. But yeah. if we look specifically at, at COVID, it's brought some other changes you know, for that. The first one is very much driven a lowering of revenues. So it's had a revenue impact on many businesses because payments are often on a transactional basis and revenues are exactly aligned with transaction volumes. So if there's less transactions, less people spending, you know, then revenues be going down. And that has had a big impact for many you know, merchant outlets as also as uh, payment providers. And some of the other significant changes is to do with the choice of payment methods. You know, we've really seen, and it's been you know, crystal clear, the move of consumers away from cash to digital you know, forms of payments. And so we'll all have seen this, you know, merchants now asking us to pay by you know, contactless, whereas before often they would have been reluctant and sometimes would have preferred to you know, still take a cash payment but cash is now the dirty word as far as merchants are concerned. The second shift I think related to this you know, is to do with the change of shopping habits. You know, this again is the move, you know, greater move to e-commerce uh, and online payments and away from face-to-face -face transactions. So some people could say it's a final nail in the high street. You know, it's this move you know, from cash to digital and from the high street you know, to online. And it's going to have a uh, you know, definite impact, long-term impact uh, on providers because it's this change in behaviors. Once someone has, has conducted a payment method with using a new technology a few times, then it becomes the norm for them. Status quo was always the enemy for new payment technologies or suppliers. Now that people have been forced, thanks to COVID, to try a new payment method or use a different supplier, then the, all the likelihood is they'll continue to do so you know, going forward. And we have seen though with the COVID crisis, you know, providers, payment providers responding very differently. Some have done a sterling job of being able to respond, to empathize with their clients and their customers and provide appropriate revisions to their terms and conditions, new services, you know, special solutions, you know, recognizing the changing worlds and the unexpected situations. And people will have long memories. The organizations that looked after them during COVID 
with the ones they will trust and continue to use you know, going forward. It's interesting that you sort of say that and to pick out on a couple of bits, obviously you, you mentioned about the transaction levels obviously going down because people aren't spending much. Obviously the, the economy is suffering for that. But do you think that highlights a sort of a limitation in the business model where why it's based around revenue share of the, the payment itself? Uh, yes, there is an impact on that. But the biggest impact is going to be on the starting and early growth you know, players, you know, the fintechs but, you know, particularly. Those yeah. are the one who've been going for market share, very much aggressively going for volumes and customer acquisitions. And their projections you know, have been hit by this slowdown. So really it's the fintechs are going to be, uh, are suffering now, you know, thanks to COVID and the lower volumes. And one, yeah. of these, one of the side effects of this is to do with the uh, market valuations for those companies. Uh, and so, we may well see some, some new uh, greater M&A activity you know, in the sector, you know, reflecting you know, the lower valuations, and maybe it might be a great time for organizations to put a bid in for some of these really innovative new digital payment providers. Okay, it's interesting. And, and sort of move, moving on a little bit from that, you know, what, what do you really see as the key trends at this moment in time then in, in the payments industry? And the, the, the trends often come from the technologies and the key technology is the mobile phone, you know, the, the smartphone. You know, the, this is the game changer. This is the one which impacts all types of payments, whether it's buying online, whether it's be, you know, having your, you know, a card within a mobile wallet still, you know, stored within, within your phone, whether it be the mobile banking transactions, you know, whether it be the notifications you get received from your phone or you've made a purchase, or there's a, a warning to, to respond to. So it's really the mobile phone and the mobile payments you know, has, has seen the most change. And this is, the, this is what's driving you know, the, the industry you know, transition. And it's very much the fintechs who've been capitalizing on the new capabilities you know, of the screen, the mobile always on device with all its capabilities, you know, as, you know, such as you know, ability to do biometric recognitions, you know, they're always on, and to be able to provide you know, instant you know, notification services. Yeah, it's really interesting. And obviously thinking about sort of obviously, you know, uh, the, the new way of working, the increased functionality of phones, etc. We're, we're now sitting here in a, a virtual press lounge with people watching us uh, virtually wandering around exhibitions. What are your thoughts about sort of virtual exhibitions and conferences and, and the role they'll play sort of now and into the future? Well, I think they're very much firstly, you know, They've, they've been, people had to adapt their models to reflect the reality, you know, the pandemic, you know, the health you know, you know, crisis, because frankly, it is not safe to have mass gatherings, you know, of, you know, huge numbers of people in one place. What we've seen is that technology does exist, you know, the platforms have new capabilities constantly being launched to be able to provide many of the uh, capabilities that a physical event you know, could previously you know, handle. Obviously, we, one of the things which is missing is the human element, you know, the social engagement, you know, the chance to catch up with that person you used to know, the person, you know, the chance to be able to, to get to know someone one personally. But the new virtual format and the platforms do allow considerable productivity enhancements you can get so much done you know, in, in a short space of time without needing to travel you know, to the event um, and also all that come, comes with that. And so really, you know, there are formats and it's really, it's the companies you know, such as the EPA who who've pivot their model for physical events you know, to digital you know, programs, uh, very much responding to you know, their merchant, their member needs uh, and providing an alternative way to provide information, you know, to provide knowledge sharing, you know, networking, uh, but in a virtual world, you know, rather than you know, in a physical, you know, concept. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Obviously, it's very much underpinned by developments in technology as well. Uh, you know, the, the capability and the bandwidth to actually transmit voice and video appropriately and, you know, in a quality manner um, has taken us quite a while to get to. If this had happened several years ago, we may not be in the same sort of place, really. And, uh, you know, the banks wouldn't be saying, you know, there's no need for employees to return to work for many months. Yeah, yeah exactly. They, they, they would have needed to people be back in the offices because there was no practical alternative other than office. 
we're blessed by the advantages of the technology and how we can do so much you know, for that. One, yeah. one, of this, one of the side benefits of, of these virtual you know, conferences uh, and exhibitions is that we can appeal to much wider audiences. People can come and attend from different countries, from different parts of the country, um, and this makes it much more accessible. It also means that you know, speakers, you know, international speakers, can talk at the events. And so again, you know, different perspectives you know, being done from that. So there's many upsides you know, that would not be so easy to achieve in a physical you know, conference uh, or expression. And I suspect this is a game changer. It's going to be the case ongoing, but maybe it's a question of how we can create a hybrid model, you know, a mixture of a physical and a virtual event you know, in the coming years. But you know, the virtual is definitely the right thing for 2020. It's the responsible thing for organizers to do. And it allows people to be able to move forward and to try and you know, uh, capitalize you know, on the economic opportunities and needs that exist today. Fantastic, yeah. So while we're talking about sort of uh, we're talking 2020, let's have, uh, I've got time for perhaps one more question, which is really thinking about what is the future of payments for the rest of this year and obviously into 2021? What's your sort of th thoughts on that? Well, having been worked in the payment industry for 25 years, I've now realized that really nothing happens quickly in payments. <laughs> we're always talking really in reality about a five year time horizon. And we could track back lots of examples of payment programs that took five years to make their, their mark. So 2020 and 21, we could only expect the things which are already have planned to have taken place. Other new initiatives will take a number of years. So what can we see in 2021? Well, strong customer authentication is one of the payment programs, you know, where the date, you know, you know date lines here really hit. Uh, and so we'll see the need for customers to be authenticating with biometrics, you know, with second factors, multi-factor authentication, in order to be able to secure uh, the transaction and to prevent fraud. What, what I'm talking about fraud, that's probably the other big area that I see change happening in. Criminals have spotted the opportunity and the value of the payment transactions. And as people have been transitioning to new models, new ways of, you know, of, of payment and moving online, the criminals have been looking for weaknesses uh, and they have very much been targeting you know, customers and payment transactions. And so if we're looking in this 18 month horizon, then it's very much the tension needs to be on greater fraud prevention and risk management to try and make sure business is done securely and the customers are protected because the criminals have seen this as an opportunity for them, uh, but we mustn't let them get away with it. We need to up our ante and strengthen our defenses to make sure payments can continue to be secure, uh, customers can have confidence, and the economy can go back again to being successful. I think you're right. It's been mentioned by, by numerous uh, interviewees that we've spoken to that the sort of digital identity, uh, the, the fraud and the onboarding is going to be a key factor going forwards. Um, there was, there was, there was one, one other point, you, you know, which is obviously very relevant here in the UK to the timeline you're talking about. Uh, obviously, the UK will be leaving Europe as well. You know, 1st of January of uh, 2020 is when the timeline runs out. And so at this stage, then we're going to have to see you know, what changes are put in place of the departure you know, from UK from, from Europe and which European regulations will continue to be used in, in, in Europe and where we can expect to see deviations. So this is going to be uh, something which will impact both the European providers as well as UK you know, specifically because we will have divergence in particular areas but we'll also have continued alignment in, in others. Absolutely. Well, I think we've come to the sort of the end of our scheduled time. Thank you very much, Mark, for, for joining us here in the MasterCard Virtual Press Lounge at Pay360. It's my pleasure. And uh, I look forward to you know, seeing and talking to other people during the course of the conference. Thank Love you very it. much for the opportunity. Thank you.